unwell so even just sitting down was a great strain to me. So hi, uh, it's been a while because like the world sort of imploding and I've been like I don't really know what to put out here because frankly I just don't know. I'm gonna be doing a book review because like I've spent a lot of money on books and I feel like I should kind of you know, get some use out of them apart from enjoyment. Um, and today I thought, what a fun thing to do would be to review every book Lauren Graham has written. Now, she was in Gilmore Girls, Parenthood, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, she's written books, Bad Santa as well, but we don't really talk about that. Um, and I thought, I like her, I like her work. And as the title says, I am a massive simp for her. So I thought, since I've given her a lot of, a reasonable amount of my money, let's do it. So I have taken notes on my laptop because I have a terrible attention span and I can't concentrate on like more than one thing at once. Please hang up and try again. So the first book I want to talk about is Someday, Someday, Maybe. Now this was Lauren's debut novel. Um, she has said multiple times it's not an autobiography. I think it is a little bit. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Write what you know and I think she has and that's perfectly fine. Not that she has to justify herself to me but I don't think that's really a problem. So the story follows Franny Banks who's trying to become an actress in 1990s New York like everyone else in New York at that time and you know, she set herself a deadline and if she hasn't made it by then, then she's going to become a teacher and give up on acting and just go whoosh. Sorry. Now the main character in this has really pissed off a lot of Amazon reviewers. You know, people are like, I have direct quotes, allow me to check. She comes across as quote, incredibly annoying, end quote, and a quote, neurotic woman, end quote. But I don't know, I feel like Franny's actually a really realistic character. Just because things seem to be going well for someone and, you know, they seem to be achieving everything that they've set out to, it doesn't mean that you can't obviously be insecure and a bit anxious. And I feel like that's kind of what Franny's like. I don't know, I think it's kind of refreshing to read about a clever and successful character who, you know, seems to be ticking a lot of boxes but then they're really, I don't know, prone to overthinking and self-doubt. I think that's really nice in a kind of weird and also neurotic way but I don't know. Not the time The Guardian. No but I feel like if someone else had written a similar book it could be quite uncomfortable to read with someone so in their own head. But I actually think it's quite funny and charming. I like that word. And I would use it for this book that you kind of can't see because the ring light's so bright. But I think it's actually kind of funny and relatable and to have a character like that, I mean, anyway. Um, I don't think it's neurotic. Maybe a wee bit, but not much. It's not really neurotic. <laughs> someday, Someday Maybe is not an action-packed novel. And in my opinion, just my opinion, I don't think that's really what Lauren wanted it to be. I think the book was intended as like a light-hearted read, but also as a sort of character study, if that makes sense. So it's not really about being a plot-driven story. It's about seeing how Franny grows as these things happen to her. Mainly, for me, I might be wrong. Cause, I mean, Lauren Graham could be watching this doubt it but she could read watch this and go um it is plot driven and action packed and I go oh, sorry you know she has like romance troubles so deciding between this really good looking and talented guy who's quite obviously bad for her and then a roommate who's really nice and modest but not someone she really would have considered to be like a romantic interest 
you know she starts off as a character who really really tries too hard and is also trying to be someone that she's clearly not to then becoming less fixated on her deadline and like more focused on you know the good things in her life and the opportunities she's given and just kind of living I suppose. My one criticism of this book is the ending. I can't lie and pretend I liked it. I, I really don't know how she could have done it better um, but just reading it, just the abruptness like I said and I don't know, I wanted more but I don't know what I wanted but just not the end that I was given. I don't know if that really makes sense but yeah the ending was a no for me. I did cry at the end um, which was really awkward because when I read this we weren't really in lockdown so I was with a cafe on the coast and you know just reading it with a cup of coffee and it's not like the end of the book made me cry necessarily but it was the you know acknowledgements at the end and it's oh I just I want to read some of them for you so the first one was for Diane Keaton and we love Diane Keaton she's so talented and gorgeous and we love her but she said thank you Diane Keaton for responding to some long boring story I was probably telling with you should write a book instead of you should really save this for your therapist your inspiration meant the world to me and I just it makes me so sad it's like you're very successful and educated and like I don't know why would you think people don't want to listen to your story? I would, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's just like that sort of thing. You can kind of see it in Franny as well and you're like, oh, I hope you don't feel that way about yourself because like you're not boring and you're worth listening to. And then there was a bit for uh, Peter Krause, her partner, who is also in Parenthood. Thank you, Peter, for carrying my dresser up the stairs all those years ago, for keeping me company in the office when inspiration eluded me, and for the thousands of other gestures of your strength and kindness. I love you so. It's like, oh, I need a boyfriend. Overall, I really like this book. Um, it's nice, pleasant, light-hearted, which we kind of need right now. <laughs> Despite what the critics of Amazon have said, Franny's actually a really good character I think because she's realistic and she's not like glamorous and she's not like happy all the time which I like because you know it's what life is but I kind of forgot to mention actually that some of the pages in this are Filofax pages which is cool because I still have a Filofax even though they're a 90s thing look I don't know if you can even see it you can, I can. Like that. I don't know. I think it's really cool. It's, it's a nice touch. You know, she does tend to add like illustrations in her books as I'll show you in the next couple. But yeah, I really liked it. And I would I would recommend. But not, this isn't one I would recommend the most. But it's good. It's really good. Good debut novel. If I could write something half this good, I'd be quite happy. So, it's a from me. <laughs> Please hang up and try again. I'm just so happy because like, I mean you can see more of what's wrong with my face but like no one will be moaning now that my videos are too dark or they'll be like oh you should light yourself up more. I'm doing it. I'm not well but I can't get a doctor's appointment so. Cheers. So the next book is In Conclusion, Don't Worry About It. It's really difficult to see with such a bright light. Oh my god, I'm so good at this, but that's it. It's really pretty, I really like the cover of this book. It's really simple, but like, pretty. It's like a coffee table book. It's a lot shorter than the last one. Um, that's not really a problem, <laughs> but it's um, adapted from a speech that Lauren Graham gave at Langley High School, which I think she went to, I think. Now this is like, this is the sort of book that I think would make a really cute gift. You know, if maybe someone you knew was going through like a hard time, like a lot of people are right now, or you know, if someone you knew was graduating from school or university, I think this would be a lovely thing to give them. If I didn't already have it, I would love it as a gift. Um, I should say, I'm not sponsored. I'm a simp. Anyway, it's actually kind of meant to be for graduates because it was the like commencement speech at the high school. 
but it's dedicated to graduates and other hopefuls so I'm not a graduate but I am a hopeful <laughs> so although I'm biased because like I said I am a massive simp <laughs> for Lauren Graham this is probably my favourite of all three books that I'm going to talk about today I just feel like there's some really really beautiful parts of this to be honest like just the way I don't know you, you just feel her wisdom coming through and there's some parts and you're like oh I'm not worried about it you're right <laughs> thank you so like I don't really think personally there's a lot to review here but there's some really nice bits I want to read you because they're just they're really nice so but here's a secret the lows don't last any longer than the highs do and she's right it's fine <laughs> you just think that the lows last longer because you don't really want to be experiencing them but actually correct and time is relative physics <sighs> it's breaking news noise i'm not even going to read it you know that if the world's imploding Fine. The next one is, why not treat yourself now as the success you dream of becoming? Respect yourself and your work as, as you would if you were being paid to be the boss and I bet you'll climb the ladder even faster. And it's true because she says something else in this about, um, what is it? Like, if you're an actor, really the, the small parts and the big parts shouldn't be any different to you because you're still putting in the same amount of effort. The only thing is that obviously you get paid more. And it's right, like, regardless of whatever it is, like, you should always be given things 100%. And the last one I want to read you is this. In conclusion, don't worry about it. You already have the most and you're already one of the best. Oh, I really don't know why that's capitalised, but I like it, you know? I'm like, oh. I mean, she studied English. I <laughs> study biomedical science but no I really like it this is kind of my book for when I'm feeling a bit like sad or if I'm like oh I should just give up because oh, what's the point or I'm like I have no idea what's going on in my life right now and where it's going to end up um, and it kind of it doesn't like change that at all but it kind of gives you just a different way of looking at things which I really like and yeah if I was going to recommend any of these books to you I would recommend this one because it's nice it's light and like I said there's you know illustrations which are cute I'm sorry I'm so tired my brain just keeps going ugh, going to sleep and then waking back up again please hang up and try again the last book I wanted to talk about is Talking As Fast As I Can um, and this is it's autobiographical but like for real this one uh, it's a collection of essays really um, about important times in our life from you know being at school and growing up to going to university to working on Gilmore Girls to parenthood um, I'm I don't know if I'm actually ashamed but basically I bought the audiobook before I bought the book I didn't buy the audiobook I had a free thing I thought I like Lauren Graham she's got books I'll listen to this one and the audiobook is so good because she does the narration of it and she can add in wee bits and you get like her dad comes on for a bit as well it's really cool you know, the book is funny but like the audiobook is even funnier sorry <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I like Lauren Graham's sense of humour, I like that she has probably, like the rest of us, experiences, you know, melancholy <laughs> and sadness and anger, we don't really get that in any of her books, you know, they're nice and light and if she ever did want to bring out a serious book I would read it, but you know, it's just, it's not really her way. And what I like is she can put like funny spins on serious situations and it's a very good life skill to have by the way and yeah this book is just full of that really um, I liked in this book as well here's a good example 
she put like pictures in it which I know a lot of people do in autobiographies but you know it's nice and even you do get them with the audiobook as well um, it comes with like a PDF and you can scroll through as she's talking she'll go see picture oh and then you go oh that's really cool it's a nice touch um, you know stuff from like Gilmore Girls um, yeah I don't really know what to say about this book except it's just again it's a nice light one especially the audiobook get the audiobook um, and it's kind of nice because you get insights into like her as a person, the acting industry, like just life and um, autobiographies are like my favourite genre of books, I read any ones because I just think it's actually kind of a privilege to read people's autobiographies, you know they're letting you into parts of their lives that probably only told their significant other or friends and that's kind of the way this is written like she's talking to a friend which is really nice it's lovely to read like I've read a lot of autobiographies but this this is a really good one because it's not I don't know I cried at Diane Keaton's right we'll review that another time but I didn't really get that with this I just felt nice a lot of the time so so that was me reading every single book Lauren Graham's written. I'd really like her to write more. A lot of people on the Amazon reviews don't feel the same way. I do. Um, because really, you know, I think she is a good writer, but even if she wasn't, you know, someone's still putting their work out there. And I think you, you, you should give people's work a chance. So if I had to recommend any of them, be this one. In conclusion, don't worry about it. Um, if I was to recommend an audiobook to you, not sponsored, but pro tip, would be this one. They are all on Audible, and I think she does do the, the narration for all of them. So it's really quite cool, and yeah. But see, if you get this book, you get to do this. Which is good fun. I've done it multiple times. Just sometimes when I'm sad, I go... Take a picture, send it to my friends and they ignore me. So it's, <laughs> it's good times really. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this, if you would like me to review anything else, please ask because the chances are I bought it last year for something to do and, you know, haven't read it or haven't reviewed it. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. If you're not subscribed, please, I think it's down there. And if you want to comment, that's also cool. Down there, you can like it. Please don't dislike it. Please. <laughs> and. Sorry, I was just checking my eyebrows. Yeah. And, you know, I'll leave the links down below. If anyone does want to buy them, you know, she has no idea who I am, to be honest. But that said, I still think she worked really hard and I think you should buy them because <laughs> um, you know I think it takes a lot of effort to write a book really you know it's a long process she's done it three times and I just think like I said I'm always up for giving people's books a chance like my friends have written books I always buy them because I'm like I know how much that's taken for you so See you later, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!